Welcome to our online worship for Geneva Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Joe Albright, and I want to say a very special word of welcome to any of you who are worshiping with us virtually as visitors today. We are delighted to have you with us. If you'd like a bulletin, you can find a link right on the front page of our website. However, as per usual, all of the words to the liturgy and songs are are on the screen as we go throughout our worship today. For those of you who might be considering attending in person, our official Celebration Sunday, Stewardship Sunday, will be next week, next Sunday, October the 25th. Now, weather permitting, we're hoping to do this outside on our playground. This should enable us to have more people in attendance and allow us to do some singing. Right after worship, we will have a boxed lunch picnic for any of you who are able to stay and enjoy that. Now, we will have some chairs provided, but if you have a comfortable camp chair or folding chair or even a few extras, we encourage you to, to please bring them. And now, friends, this is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Now is the moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Today is the day of salvation. Here is the path to new life. Already joy is abounding and love is flowing. For this is the day God is making. Let us rejoice and worship together. As we come before the Lord, one of our first acts of our joyful worship is to confess anything that may be separating us from God or others. Come, children of God, let us speak the truth and hide nothing. Please pray with me. Holy God, you have given us so much, not the least of which are the gifts of love and life 
and each other. Yet sometimes we fail to be amazed by your generosity. Sometimes we want more than we actually need. Sometimes we live gripped in fear, worried that they won't be enough. Forgive us these times, Lord. Help us to live and order our lives in such a way that we would serve as a witness to your love and generosity. Empower us to receive and share the abundant life that you offer through Jesus Christ. Hear now our silent prayers of confession. In the name of Jesus, Amen. There is good news. God's promise is true and reliable. When we confess our sins, God is forgiving and merciful. We can start over. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Thanks be to God. As our song of response, let us say the Gloria Patre together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew this morning, chapter 25. This is towards the end of Jesus' ministry. And in this chapter, he tells three parables. We're going to look at just one of these parables, but in all three... He says, the kingdom of God is like this. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a, in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a, a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. 
So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In a Charlie Brown comic, Linus is eating a sandwich. And he looks down at his hands and he says, hands are fascinating things. I like hands. My hands seem to have a lot of character. These are hands which one day may accomplish great things. These are hands which someday may do marvelous works. They may build mighty bridges or heal the sick or hit home runs or write soul stirring novels. These are hands which one day may change the course of human destiny. Looking over at Linus' hands, Lucy scoffs. Yeah, but they've got jelly on them. You know, in life, it's easy to be like Lucy. It's easy to find and point out what's wrong or just to get stuck in what is. But I love the fact that Linus, he sees potential in himself and he's able to look beyond the jelly, beyond the day, to what one day might be. In our scripture this morning, Jesus, Jesus was telling a parable that deals in potential. He says the kingdom of God is like this. And then he goes on to tell a story. Now let's, let's break this down for just a moment. This is a story about talents. And in that day and age, a talent was actually a huge sum of money. It was roughly equal to 15 years pay for a typical day laborer. I mean, that's an enormous amount of money. Now some scholars believe that Jesus, that he uses this extravagant amount to symbolize the abundance of gifts that God has given each of us. One of the central claims of our scripture is that everything we have is a gift from God. And we've talked about this some over the last few weeks. We, we've talked about the gift of our bodies, the gift of creation, and the beauty of the earth all around us our relationships, time itself. And you might even also think about your intelligence, your creativity, your education, your ability to sing or dance or teach. I mean, even, even our ability to, to earn income. These are all gifts. Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a master who doles out gifts. Now, stepping back just a moment, uh, this parable, it has kind of a troubled ending, doesn't it? So, so why does Jesus say that the last servant was judged so harshly? Well, because he buried his gifts, right? He, you know, he, he was afraid, clearly, and he decided to play it safe. Now, I don't know about you, but I can definitely relate to this third servant. I mean, what if there's not enough? What if I need some of this later? What if my master wants this back intact as it was? The thing is, in acting on his fear, this third servant fails to see the potential in the gifts that he's been given. So what about the other two servants in the parable? Well, on the other hand, they take a huge risk. They decide not to passively wait it out. They put their gifts to work. 
the gifts multiply, they're entrusted with more, and they experience joy. They get to enter into the joy of their master. So there's something about putting our gifts to work, using our gifts, investing our gifts, that allows us to share in God's joy. Clearly, Jesus is telling us that the gifts we've been given come with a responsibility and an opportunity. So several years ago now, my mother, she sent me an article that she had clipped out of a magazine. It's an article entitled, Drifting Toward Hope. And it was written by a man named Vin Chung. Now, as a small child, Chung was a refugee from Vietnam. He and his family had set sail on a very small makeshift boat, and they were rescued at sea, and then later taken in by a church in Arkansas, of all places. Chung said that growing up in poverty, even here in the States, life was, it was extremely hard. But Chung himself worked hard. He ended up going to college and then on to medical school, later became a doctor. In 2002, Chung returned to Vietnam to visit his relatives, and he said he was just appalled at how they lived in dire poverty, just squalor. He wrote this, I was shocked. Their houses were shacks. Their walls were plastered over with newspaper. My cousins slept on the floor. Visiting them was like walking into a parallel universe, a life that would have been mine had the wind blown our boat in a different direction. Chung went on to write, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus said, when someone has been entrusted with much, much will be required. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. I used to wonder who Jesus meant because I sure didn't think it was me or my family. I mean, the way I saw it, we had been given nothing, entrusted with nothing. I hoped that rich and powerful people would hear Jesus' words and take them to heart. But when I went to Vietnam, I finally understood that Jesus meant me. I was the one who was plucked from the South China Sea. I was the one granted asylum in a nation where education is attainable for everyone and prosperity is available for everyone. I worked hard to get where I am today, but the humbling truth is that my hard work was possible only because of a blessing that I did nothing to deserve. And that blessing is something I must pass on any way I can. You know, I think we've all had those moments when we've realized that simply by being born in this country, we have won the birth lottery. And I think we've also had those moments that have caused us to pause and reflect on the way in which our faith is both a blessing and a summons. It calls out the better side of our humanity. And it raises the question, how are the blessings that I have received being passed through me? You know, it, it is difficult because when we look at the world around us, the message we get is completely different, isn't it? Which is why I can totally relate to that third servant, the fear that he felt. I mean, there is this myth of scarcity that tells us there won't be enough, that you got to grab what you can while you can that you have to look out for number one. And it's weird, because at the same time, we also know deep down that that is not where true joy and happiness are found. True joy is found in doing for others. True joy is found in generosity. Okay, so, so again, going back to the parable, we might ask, okay, God, so, You've given me these talents. 
these resources. You've given me the ability to generate income. You've given me some income coming in. What potential is there in these gifts for blessing you? How can I manage these? How do you want me to use what I have in a way that makes a difference? And, and maybe even more concrete, do I have a plan? Because realistically, it is very difficult to be generous if we don't have a plan, especially financially. Because if it's not part of our budget to give, it can be so stressful. So what's our plan? Well, the scriptures talk about giving it away an amount that is in direct proportion to what we have coming in, a percentage. And sometimes we'll talk about the biblical tithe. Tithe is a Hebrew word that means 10%. But for most people, that is not going to be a starting point. For some people, it's not even an ending point. Some people go beyond that. But the idea here is that if we are giving in proportion to what we have coming in, then it helps us to plan and perhaps plan to grow, giving a little more year over year, kind of raising our percentage. But again, the idea here is in, that we are intentionally thinking through this. It's like, okay, okay, here are the resources I have. How am I going to put them to work? How am I going to invest them? What's the potential here? Now, what I've found is that if you plan for it, it takes all the stress out of it. And it actually allows your giving to be a great source of joy. Because then, then when you see a need arise, you can think, oh yeah, I can take care of that. I can help there. I've got that. And it actually becomes quite fun. Now, next week, our session is going to be asking those of us who are members to fill out a pledge card for our church for 2021. And I hope that you will see this simply as a part of your plan. And maybe, maybe even this pledge card could be a prayer. God, I know that this community of faith is where my faith is nurtured. It, it, it's where lives are touched. It's one of the places you have promised to be at work. And so I want to invest some of what you've given me back here. And as we dedicate these cards, I hope that that very act will be a source of joy for you. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a master who doles out gifts. May you come to see the many, many gifts in your hands. May you see the potential in them. And may you use them, invest them in such a way that they bring great joy and peace to the world around you and to the world within you. May it be so. Amen. Where true charity and love dwell, God is also there. Since the love of Christ has joined us, has joined us in one body. Let us all be glad and rejoice now and always. And as we love and serve our Lord, the living God, so let us with sincerity love each other. When 
Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God, creator of the universe, giver of every good gift, author of life itself. We believe that God has given us gifts to be shared freely and generously. We acknowledge that we are merely stewards of all that is God's, caretakers of God's home. We believe that faithful stewardship is an act of worship, a means of praising God who has blessed us so abundantly. We believe that God has great things in store for us, for it is in giving that we will receive. Amen. Loving God, we really don't have to look far to see your hand at work. You have blessed us so richly with life and love and family. We especially thank you today for the blessings of this family of faith, for each generation represented, for the way you have connected us, for the way that you have brought us together through the love of your son, Jesus. We turn our prayers now to the world around us we pray for the people in our country and around the world who are in dire need, for those sick and suffering with COVID, others who have lost loved ones, and others still struggling with depression. We pray that you would be with our world leaders and our nation's leaders. Work in them and through them, O oh God, and work through us. Our hearts yearn, they long for an end to violence, an end to war, an end to hunger and poverty and strife. May we be your hands and feet to that end. We pray also for our own country during this election time. At a time when our nation and our world are so divided, help us to recognize and honor the unity we have as your children, that together our actions and our very lives would bring healing and hope in Jesus' name. There are other prayers, O oh God, that we've not necessarily written down or spoken out loud, but they are our prayers nonetheless. So in the next moment of silence, we ask you to hear the prayers of our hearts. Loving God, we pray today that you would continue to give us eyes to see your hand at work, your blessings on every side, ears that are attuned to the whisper of your voice, and hearts to respond. May we invest our talents, our resources, and our very lives in your kingdom work. We pray in Jesus' name, and we join our voices in the prayer that he taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd like to make an offering, there are one of two ways you can do that. You can always just go on our website, and on the front page there is a link to give. If you follow that link, it's very simple. And of course, you can always just mail a check into the church office. Our weekly offerings are the means by which our worship and all of our ministry and mission happen. And we give in response to God's love and mercy and grace. Crop Hunger Walks are ending hunger one step at a time, around the corner and around the globe. And so when I 
came here to town, I looked it up and our church was involved and that was, the rest is history. I've made many, many friends. We have lots of collegiality amongst the different congregations and lots of fun when we do the walk. Join your local walk at crophungerwalk.org. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Generous God, Bless and multiply these tithes and offerings so that your ministry and mission through us would touch lives, change hearts, and deepen discipleship. In Christ's name, amen. Whose giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store. Nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave shattered door. Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our days. Skills and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son. All at peace in health and freedom, races join the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants, fit to answer at your throne. Treasure to you have entrusted, gain through powers you grace conferred, ours to use for home and kindred, and to spread the gospel word. Open wide our hands in sharing, as we heed Christ's ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by love. This week, may you intentionally reflect on the many blessings, talents that the Lord has placed in your hands. And may you ask, God, how do you want me to use this life, these resources, over this next year in a way that is a blessing to you? And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>